Boy, I blog so you don't all read that, but that little boy, Owen Daniel, we've known about him for a couple years, been dying to meet him, met him the other day, and I told RJ, when you come out, you know, I'm going to show you where his grave is, but I'm going to walk away because you guys need some time, you know, I think everybody needs a personal minute when they're doing that for the first time, and RJ had been there before, but his wife and his son had never been there. So they take him over there and I'm walking away and I look over my shoulder and little Owen is, his mommy leans down and says, aren't you going to say hi to Daniel? And he goes, Daniel, where are you? <laughs> it just melted my heart. But you know, really that's like so hard for a little two-year-old to understand. But, yeah. Anyway, did I answer that question? Holly girl, we got to get together. Nine namesakes, people, in 10 years. Nine namesakes. Crazy. Well, that's going back. Yeah. You and Brian have a lot to do with raising these wonderful kids, so you need to give yourself a lot of credit. <laughs> you, I tell people all the time that Daniel was weird. Andrea is a normal kid. So I really do feel like it had a lot to do with just the person who Daniel is. But I do appreciate the fact that people um, understand that we had, I raised him like a drill sergeant. I, you know, I was, pr I was pretty strict. And I guess when you read in the book about his knife incident in second grade, you'll understand because he comments that I was immediately um, irate, I think is the word he used. My father too, but not, not in so much of a, uh, not in so extreme as my mother. Yeah. He took a pocket knife to school. I'll tell you the story. He took a pocket knife to school in second grade after we told him, Daniel, don't, you can't. Brian had given him a little pocket knife. He got it at work or something. And we're like, you cannot take this to school. But we never told him why, which I don't know if I believe you have to explain to your kids everything why it's yes or no. I'm old school, people. I don't think you have to tell them everything. It's just because I said so. But we never really told him why. And so he snuck his pocket knife in his backpack. And he was sitting in Miss Anna's classroom. Miss Anna, are you here? She's homesick. Oh. Here's a couple of Sonoma teachers right here. Daniel's favorite fifth and sixth grade teacher, Mr. Worsham, is sitting right there. And he's next door neighbor to Anna, right? Is that right? So Anna, um, Daniel had her for second and third grade. She taught a combination class, and she taught the gifted kids in second and third grade. And uh, Daniel snuck the pocket knife to school. And then he was showing it to a girl because a boy wouldn't have told. He was showing it to a little girl and she thought the right thing to do was tell the teacher. So she, and he was kind of like, you know, sneaking it in the backpack. And or I think she looked, he was showing it to somebody and she looked over the shoulder or something. And she's like, I'm gonna tell Miss Anna. And you know, she did. And so Miss Anna drug him up to the, to the principal's office and uh, you know, said, I, I'm sorry, Daniel, but we have to, you know, acknowledge this or whatever. And I got a message on the answering machine from the principal who said, if you're a teacher, you're going to love me right now. She said, your son brought a pocket knife to school and we, need to, and we need to handle this. And I called that woman back and I said, you scare the living daylights out of that boy. I don't ever want him to do anything like this again. Don't go easy on him. And she didn't. She was a really, really, by the book, strict, love her principal and uh, she told him, Daniel, you know, and this was before they started suspending kids, like literally a few months before they started suspending kids for bringing a knife because a friend of ours brought a pocket knife, uh, a uh, butter knife to school, not three or four months later and a year younger than Daniel and he got suspended for a couple of days. But you know, the principal said, you've always been a good boy. We won't have to put this on your permanent record, but if you ever do anything like this again, and Daniel literally stood there and just bawled. Just tears rolling down his eyes. Like, and he swears to the day he died, breaking the rules is not worth it. And I swear to God, he did not break another rule for the rest of his entire life. Because he was just afraid. Like the wrath of everybody was going to come down on him. But you know, I think that's okay. I think it's okay to discipline kids. I, like I said, I'm old school and I... I think that's okay, but um, sure. yeah. Andrea is a, a little more normal kid. She still didn't get in trouble. She was a great kid. She's a great individual, but she's a little more normal than he was, <laughs> which is good. Probably be hard to live with that nonsense your entire life. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, does somebody have a question? Yes, Miss Brown?
Yes. Yes. Okay. Because in past, He's got a mic for you right there. At the end of his sophomore year, who is sophomore? He comes up to me after your class and says, I want to let you know I'm running for ASP president. And I said, well, sweetheart, it's usually just seniors and it's really hard. I already did, Mrs. Brown. <laughs> Great, go for it. And that was it. And these studies were so involved in his life. I really appreciate it. It's my easiest two years at ASB. And I love them for that. You'll also find this out in the book. I didn't tell you that, but um, so Daniel ran for ASB president as a junior, which means he had to beat out or convince 500 seniors to vote for a junior. And in the history of Downey High School, there has never been two year student body president. So he was student body president as a junior and reelected as a senior. There has been a junior elected after him, but she did not get reelected her senior year. So he still holds the record for the only two year, uh, two term student body president. <laughs> and you said to Andrea, would you like to do this? And she's like, uh, no. Oh, I'm busy being a cheerleader and talking to people. Yes. What about mentioning his scholarship? Oh. That's exactly what I was going to ask. Okay. Um, so Downey, uh, we started a scholarship after Daniel died and got phenomenal. I think people wanted to know what they could do. And so we said, okay, let's open up a scholarship. So it's called the First Lieutenant Daniel Hyde Memorial Scholarship. And students at Downey are able to apply for that their uh, senior year. And um, there's a prompt that you need to write an essay. And I believe it asks the question like, how are you going to live your life with no mediocrity? Or how are you going to make a difference? Um, Lori and Chuck Carley are out here and their daughter was a recipient of the First Lieutenant Daniel Hyde Scholarship one year. And I'm not sure if there's anybody else out here who received it, but uh, it's a $1,500 scholarship. and. Uh, I will tell you guys that, so there's a group of boys coming to Las Vegas on Saturday because another West Pointer is getting married in Las Vegas. It was just a great opportunity for us to get some West Point kids together and have a little bit of a reunion. So of course they thought in honor of Daniel's 10 years they needed to do something physical. So they're running a half marathon and um, why am I telling you the story, Brian? Help me out. Oh. So, so, so Daniel Lennox wrote on Facebook the other day that he was going to just start a little, you know, I think it's just maybe since it's his 10 year and we're seeing his picture all over Facebook, I'll just start a little um, GoFundMe and we'll see if we can't get $1,500 to give to the scholarship. And I was like, that's great, 8.30 in the morning. So Daniel says, fingers crossed. And I was like, yeah, fingers crossed. And then he wrote me an hour later and he said, well, I don't think it's going to be a problem. We already have $836 in one hour. And I was like, that's awesome. And he changed the amount two more times. He went to $3,000 and then he went to $5,000 because the response was so good. But anyway, at the end of the year, one kid gets $1,500 scholarship from Daniel to, they have to prove that they're, I don't know if you all know how that scholarship program works, but they have to prove, they have to enroll in college and then show up in college and send a, a transcript saying that they're actually going to benefit from it, but yeah. So you're welcome to contribute to that at any time. If you'd like to watch kids that are wa wanting to be successful continue. I mean, $1,500 is what, half of a computer? Maybe, I don't know what they cost. Couple books. Yeah, it goes fast, I know. Okay, so thank you everyone for coming. Um, give us a couple minutes to get set up outside. We will be passing out a copy of Linda's book and she will and she will um, be signing if you're interested to get set up. Thank you so much for coming. Um, and if you're heading out right now.